Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm with Eric, the head of innovation and testing for Ping. And uh, Eric, when I visited him out in Scottsdale, we had a really long, interesting discussion, Eric, about one of the things that uh, has been very popular on the channel, has also helped my game a lot, in the swing is not getting to the club like that, but getting more leaning like that. Tell me about the study that you guys did, if you remember, between it was the same length, the same loft, the same uh, weight, but it was three different head styles and the way people, yeah. so uh, I think you know what I'm talking about. Kind of start from scratch there about this study it was really interesting. Yeah, so what we wanted to do is understand uh, how the, <laughs> how head shape influenced delivery, okay. right? So if you have, say an iron, a fairway wood and a hybrid mm -hmm. of the same loft, uh, will people deliver them differently or they deliver them the same, right? So so how does that head shape actually influence? So all things being equal, it's the same loft, it's the same length, it's right. the same swing weight. Right, well, yeah. and so, well, first we tested it at standard build. So okay. fairway woods are, are built a little bit longer, mm -hmm. irons a little bit shorter. And so we definitely saw that players delivered irons with a little more handling, mm -hmm. a little less loft yeah. than they did, say, the fairway wood on the other end of the spectrum, right. the largest head. Mm -hmm. But then when we made them all the same length and then retested, yeah. we saw a similar trend, but not as prominent. Right. So there, there's an element of the build, so the length and, 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 and things like that that influence the, the physical delivery. nature of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, but then also the head shape, when we built them all the same length, people still de deliver the fairway wood with a little bit shallower angle of attack. Mm -hmm. Um, and a little less handling right. than they did with the iron. The iron, they, they tended to have a little more handling, um, a little and a little bit lower launch and a little bit steeper. Right. And again, it wasn't as prominent as when we had the lengths change, but it was still uh, a prominent effect that you saw in the data. So there's something just in the look of it that got, gave people the idea with with the uh, like seven wood or whatever it was, yep. that it should it should be a little shallower. Yep. So my question to you, and this, this might be an unsolvable question, but my question to you, how do we get kind of the handle leanness of the iron but the shallowness of the seven wood <laughs> you, know, you know like just in club only yeah well i mean that's a good question and i don't know if i have a great answer for right. you right now uh but it's one that you know we continue to research with mm. club design try and figure out how we can you know we're all about breaking trade-offs and breaking relationships right. so if there's certain things that kind of always seem to go hand in hand yeah a lot of times if we can through club design break those similar with like turbulators as we talked about with the driver yeah. trying to break the you know, aerodynamics versus moment of inertia. If we can break that trade-off, right? Great. Same thing with delivery. If we oh, can I see what you're saying to... when you say break trade-off, because there's always been the trade-off between oh, it's it as it's getting bigger, it's getting slower. So you and and you're always sacrificing one for the other. So you're breaking that by with exactly. that. I got gotcha, you. Yeah. So and same thing that you're talking about. You're like, hey, can we actually get somebody to deliver it this way, but still maintain a, a shallower yeah. angle right. attack, right. vice versa? Because typically they tend to trend together, and yeah. so. It's a great research question, something we're looking into. Okay, so so something that happened to me that was really interesting on the range that Eric and I were talking about is Eric, I was uh, repeat it for you, but I, th I don't know if you guys have heard this unless they've been on uh, BB underscore golf show on Instagram. You maybe would have seen my Instagram post about this. I was on a range and, and I was hitting the ball fairly okay, and a guy came to me. There was just a new golfer, you know, he had bought some clubs from a thrift store, and he brought out these clubs. Gosh, I forget. Brownings was the name. The Browning 444s or something. And I'll put, I'll post a little picture up here of them. And it, what it looked like were, were like, uh, and he said they were just totally impossible to hit. He wanted to see if I could hit them because they looked like cal like uh, Calamity Jane putter. Only okay. it was every club throughout the bag. Okay. And then on the back it had a little like scoop, almost like a high bore style like scoop, that went back, but a very low profile and stuff. And when I started swinging it, I could feel something in the balance of the club, where it just felt like, because I can always feel like right before impact, the club kind of passed my hands a little bit, which I don't like. Um, but with this, like there was something in the balance of the club and I just hit hit this these guys, impossible to hit iron, just perfect, like every time. So we were talking about the blueprint iron and something that you had seen with that, where we talk about leading, where the hands should be leading the club through that. Can that be manipulated through equipment? Yeah. And again, it's something we continue to, to research. So okay. is it, Maybe the depth of the CG, if it you know had the swoop in the back and the CG was a little bit deeper with mm -hmm. that, maybe that was influencing your delivery, and so it had a different feel coming into impact. Right. Um, and so you know, with the blueprint, you know, it's a smaller head. Come on, head in, Jack. Shape. Yeah. 
Um, and so the smallest head shape in our line, obviously it's, it's, it's a true blade, thin sole, um, which really influences turf interaction quite a bit. But we did a lot of research with the blueprint and there's a certain category of golfer, typically you're more elite golfer. Then when you put something smaller in their hands, what we saw is that the impact stat area got a little bit tighter. And so we okay. did testing where we had something of say blueprint blade length, but then actually made the blade length a little bit bigger. Yeah. And we saw that for the elite players, with the smaller head of the blueprint, they actually it was kind of an aim small, miss small phenomenon yeah. where they actually tightened their the impact spread. Their spread would get closer. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, for the higher handicapper, that wasn't the case. It didn't have that effect, and so something that was, you know, the most forgiving iron we could put in their hands was going to be the best performing. Right. But for that category of players with the smaller blueprint, we saw that influence. So it worked the other way as well, where if 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 somebody was hitting it like in a just for argument's sake, like a dime space um, spread for their sweet spot with this, if you gave them a bigger face, th their sweet spot would start to spread as, see a little as well. bit of a bigger spread there. Oh, so that okay. was a trend we saw across these these elite players, mm -hmm. uh, which was an interesting phenomenon for us and, and something we're continuing to look into. Yeah. Uh, but an example of how club design, mm -hmm. you know, and something of just the, the, the blade shape right. and length can actually influence performance. So how do you make the blueprint iron, even though it's a small head, kind of br in that breaking mentality, even though it's a small head, how do you get it to be like as forgiving as something in your G-series yeah. almost? So when we did this, I mean, one of our mandates from our CEO uh, was that, you know, if we were going to do something of this size, uh, we need to make it the most forgiving Right. version on the market because ping so, you usually think of like the classic ping is like right. chunky and it's like you know forgiveness but for good players right. too yeah and so we incorporate a tip and toe weight in these irons so there's a tungsten toe weight here as well as a tip weight mm -hmm. uh, in the hosel and so that helps move some of the weight to the heel and to the toe which is i mean that's something karsten did he found an entire company on heel toe weighting and so by moving uh, the weight out to the heel and to the toe that helped us take an iron of this size um, and and give it that forgiveness that you expect from right. a ping iron. Now, would adjusting the the tungsten the weighting of the tungsten weight here have any influence? Do you think on um, on delivery as far as like through impact? Um, it, it, it could if you adjust it in a in an extreme way. Okay. Um, we've done a little bit of testing, kind yeah. of you know moving the weight around in those in those toe weights, and it doesn't have a big effect for the ranges that we're dealing okay. with. Okay. Right. Uh, with these tip the the tip and toe weights in the blueprint well, this is really cool so this is the the blueprint iron we're talking about with eric we're gonna um try to get into his lab in scottsdale and do some more videos with him but uh thank you so much eric yeah no that was really cool pleasure